How you doing guys? It will keep him well and welcome to my unboxing of the 4K Apple TV box. Uh, before I get into the unboxing itself, I've got a bit of a confession to make. Um, this, is, this is in fact a customer return. Um, story behind it is, I went to my local John Lewis store uh, with the intention of buying one at full price. I think it's about uh, 180 quid. Um, went to the electrical department and my missus decided to wander off was, while I was, was looking around for a uh, sales guy. And she calls me over and said, oh, is this the box you're looking for? Uh, wandered over to where she was and there was a display stand uh, with customer returns on there, um, products with damaged boxes uh, that were all reduced. And sure enough, it was the one I was looking for and it was reduced to 130 quid. So I thought, you know, great. Uh, found a sales guy, said to him, could we have a look inside the box, just make sure everything's uh, all right with it and everything. Guy opened it up for me, everything looked good. Um, I turned around to him, I said, right, I'll give you £110 for it. He said, why is that? I said, well, you've opened it now. I said, uh, so second hand, I want it for 110 Bloke laughed, he said, ah, go on then. So, yeah, got it for £110. Uh, couldn't have been up here, really. So it might be worth checking your local John Lewis store. You never know, you might get lucky. Failing that, um, if you go to Apple and buy one, don't forget they offer, I know in the UK, 14 days return policy. So, you know, take it home, try it out. If it's not for you, it's not a big deal. You can take it back and get a full refund for it. So start to bear in mind with that there, that you're, you know, you're not gonna be just committed to it if you do go for one of these things. Um, so right, let's uh, crack on, we'll get into the lounge and get the thing unboxed. So here it is, the Apple 4K TV box. And looking at the outside of it, we've got a sticker there, and that's just because mine was a customer return, just showing that uh, when it was tested and what's in the box. Obviously you won't get that unless yours is a return one like mine. Um, flipping it over, and we can see the uh, things that it supports on it. And that's the 4K HDR version, and it's a 32 gigabyte. Um, there is a 64 gig version of this, and after doing a bit of research online, I realized that there's no point in actually going for the 64 gig, as um, th the storage doesn't um, put any of the films onto it or anything like that. It's purely just for apps. Um, so 32 gigabytes is going to be more than enough because everything else is just streaming anyway. All right, let's get the lid off on this and see what's inside. So we've got the actual box itself there, which I'll put to one side for now, and we'll look at the uh, of the things that's in there. So we've got the remote control, which is silver on the back, and you've got a charging port on the bottom there which will be um, one of Apple's charging cables no doubt power lead and you've got some instructions and the charging cable don't think there's anything else no, that's it. So looking at the box itself here, let's get it in a bit of light. So we've got the Apple TV logo on the top. Um, nothing on the sides there. On the back, we've got connections. We've got the power, HDMI, and an Ethernet port. And looking on the bottom, Got an Apple logo and looks like some ventilation there, so I'm guessing there's a fan inside. Um, moving on, let's have a look at the uh, length of this cable. So if I get me a uh, trusty tape measure out there and try and measure this, we go for the end of there. And we are looking at about 
160, about 162 centimeters on that cable. So actually longer than I uh, got with the 65 inch OLED. So it's not a bad length, uh, could be worse. And we should move on to the setup now. Um, first thing I want to do before I actually go setting up the box is just to get how you go about uh, preparing your TV for it. Now, I've got an OLED. It'd probably be different for Samsungs and such like, but if you go into your settings, and oh, where is it? I said additional settings, and then HDMI uh, deep color. And you wanna make sure it is turned on for whichever HDMI port you're gonna be uh, plugging the device into. It's important because otherwise you won't get um, your HDR. So make sure that is turned on for the relevant port. Right, let's get this box set up now. Right, I've got everything plugged in now. Um, as you can see around the back here. What I've done just for this demonstration, I have plugged a HDMI directly from the box into the TV there in the HDMI one. Uh, normally I wouldn't have it set up like this, it'd be a bit more neater. Um, and also I've got this hardwired with an ethernet cable. You have got the option um, of wi using Wi-Fi, but I've done this purely for the convenience of having a uh, steady speed. Uh, don't want it dropping out while I'm watching a film or anything like that. And what I've got here is um, one of these, let's watch you down here. Oh, Netgear, um, oh, I'm trying to think what they're called now. Uh, power line adapter, that's the word. Um, you get them like pack of two. One plugs into your router, the other into another socket around the house, and it uses your electricity, uh, electrical system in the house to send the internet signal around. So, uh, highly recommend one of those. Let's get this plug back in. Let's turn it on for the first time. Right, we've got a little indicator come up on the box. And looks like it's kicking into life now. We've got a HDR logo up in the corner. Let's turn this light off. Be a bit easier to see, there we go. Right, pair your remote control. Um, so it's saying press down. So I'll press down on there. There we go. And well, it's, yeah, it's touch sensitive. There we go. Move up to the top. Click on English. Select country. Yeah, United Kingdom. Agree to the terms. Oh, and it's got Siri by the looks of it. So I will use Siri. Right. Um, so oh, so you can set up using a iPad, um, which I will do actually. I've got an iPad Pro, so I will say set up with device. I will now just go and get my iPad and uh, continue on a minute. Right, I've got my iPad Pro now. Um, it says, set up your Apple TV, unlock your phone, iPad, um, or iPod Touch, connect to Wi-Fi, which it is, turn on Bluetooth, hold the device close to the Apple TV. So let's turn on my Bluetooth. And I will walk over near the box, see if that does anything. Oh, and it's come up on here. Click on setup. And I get a code on the TV, which I've now got to put into the iPad. That's that done. It says setting up your Apple TV. Now we've got this screen come up. I'm going to say turn on. And it says, where is this Apple TV? 
and I've got because uh, I've got home kit with uh, my iPad Pro I've got uh, lights linked up to it and that so this is why we've got all different rooms coming up and I'm gonna go lounge I'm going to enable location services and what's this? see the world with uh, the aerial screen save you can enjoy HD video of beautiful location from all over the world um, so yeah I'll press automatically download to that um, no I ain't gonna bother with that and I'll agree to that the terms and conditions and let's it says try Dolby Vision let's get the best picture Switch into Dolby Vision will improve video quality. We'll check your HDMI cable to make sure it's compatible. You'll see a black screen for several seconds. If it doesn't work, we'll switch back automatically. So try Dolby Vision. See if, hopefully it should work. And, oh, yeah. Dolby Vision. There we go. So I've just got to agree to that that it works and there we go we're all set up and straight away it's brought up all of my recent purchases for uh, films there and just a bit of a tip for anyone who's watching this as I've uh, recently uploaded there is a sale on at the moment I expect it's on for another what, two days I think where Apple are selling loads of films at two ninety nine, and loads of them are 4K HDR or Dolby Vision. Um, I've taken full advantage of this and bought, I think, 20 HDR 4K ones in total. Um, so saving quite a bit of money. Now, before I move on, um, just going to explain reasons why I went for one of these boxes because a lot of people say well you know it's quite a, still quite a bit of money even at 110 pound for basically a streaming box but um, looking at the prices that Apple charge I mean those uh, films have cost me 60 quid in total for 20 films put it into uh, comparison to say a 4k blu-ray player you're looking at probably £15 per film at least. So, you know, to buy the same amount of films, you're looking at about 300 quid. Um, and then you've got to buy a, a 4K, 4K Blu-ray player on top, which, you know, it's then starting to get pretty expensive, I think. And plus you've got the convenience of, you know, having all this stuff instantly. Yes, there's the debate about which is the better quality. From what I've seen, there's barely anything in it, to be honest, and certainly nothing that warrants, you know, the massive increases in prices for, for the uh, for the films themselves. I couldn't warrant spending, say, another twelve pounds over the two ninety nine for, you know, a marginal difference. You know, if you're the sort of person who's going to pixel peep and all that, and you know, look for the differences, then yeah, maybe it's worth it. But for the average person, it it probably isn't, to be honest. Uh, you know. Um, so right, let's move on anyway. Let's see what we've got here. So we've got an app store. We've got uh, iTunes movies there, TV shows, and music. Let's have a quick look on the app store. Um, I'll agree to that. Straight away, so we've got um, BBC iPlayer. Again, your TV more than likely is going to have this sort of built in, but not everyone's going to have a you know, an, an OLED or whatever, and you might be missing some of these features. So, you know, you've got Netflix on there, ITV. It's like there's a few games on there. Some workout videos. So, yeah, there's a, you know, there's a few things on there. And just from using this remote control, it would seem that to get back, use the menu button, and that acts as your back button. Like that, there you go. And also you've got volume up and down, which for some reason is working straight away on the TV. I don't know how it's done that, but it is. Um, 
play pause and set up um or, or like a home button I yeah there and that will be for Siri I'm guessing so we'll try that yeah it says hold to speak I won't bother saying anything now so we go back out of that um other things now because I've got an Apple account also I can use um the, the photos so I should be able to access everything that is on my iCloud account let's have a look on there um, it says I've got to turn that on so we'll agree to that and agree to that and now hopefully it should start bringing up all my photos and videos what I'll do now I'll quickly put on a uh, bit of 4k footage that I've recorded myself um, because of copyright reasons and that I can't display any films I made this mistake before um, I spent ages doing a video for YouTube and it included about 15 seconds of a film uh, from Disney and YouTube re removed the whole video because of it. Um, so I've got to be careful what I do. I'd like to show you, you know, some decent quality streaming stuff, but unfortunately I can't. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a, you know, a brief demo of that. I mean, it's still streaming it and it's still 4K. So I'll get that lined up straight away. So is the uh, 4K 60 frames per second footage. This was just shot on a phone, but even uh, on a big TV, you know, this is 65 inches. Um, still looks pretty good to me. And one thing I've noticed is if you swipe down from the top of the remote downwards, you get up a menu um, and it shows you what speakers you're using and gives you a couple of options there for the sound. And fast forwarding, you can, oh, what was it? Um, the easiest way I found is if you press on that pause, you can then just swipe backwards and forwards and then click again and there you go or you can use Siri so if we hold down the microphone button fast forward 30 seconds oh can't do that here let's try it again Fast forward 30 seconds. Oh, you can't do that. I'm guessing that's only an option on um, the, the actual main films as that. I'm not sure, but for what I've seen before, that normally works. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. If give, give it a bit more of a try on other things. Um, like I said, I can't do that now because of copyright reasons. So let's come back at this. So what I do is press the menu button a few times and that will just keep scrolling back out or I can press that home button. Uh, let's have a look at some of the uh, settings that we've got. So let's go down to audio and visual. And we've got check cable and format. And what I'm going to do is show you the formats that you've got there. And as you can see, you've got just normal 4K HDR. Now, if you've got a TV such as a Samsung that doesn't support Dolby Vision, um, it should automatically set it to 4K HDR. Or if you've got, say, an amplifier like I've got there, that I know for some reason doesn't pass through um, Dolby Vision. I don't know if it's like something to do with the, the, the handshake thing or not, but um, that doesn't seem to work. Um, you, you know, you can just set it to 4K HDR and you're still going to have your HDR on your TV, but just not the, the certified Dolby Vision stuff. Personally, I can't see there's a massive difference between the two. So I wouldn't say you're missing out on a great deal there. Then you've got your standard definition uh, modes there as well. 
quite a few of them to uh, choose from. Coming back out, now this is quite an important one. You've got match content. Now there is an update for uh, this. Um, I don't know where it is. Oh, I can't find it now, but we, we are going to this anyway. And I believe from what I've read, it turns these settings on automatically. And that is match dynamic range and match frame rate. With these off, um, like the frame rate one, um, people have said that they get uh, the image on the screen will be stuttering, it's not smooth. So if you turn match frame rate on, that sorts that problem out. And match dynamic range, if you have it off, it will try and make everything look HDR. Now you might want that, that's fine, but if you want standard um, dynamic, standard uh, dynamic range stuff um, to play back as it is, you want to turn that um, on. So yeah, just bear that in mind with those two there. And coming back out again, got some calibration settings there. Zoom and overscan and color bars. Come back out again, audio output. So again, a bit like the drop down menu we had before, you can choose where you want to output the sound from. And surround sound, you've got a few options there for this, the quality. Of course, this is uh, set to best quality available, which I'll leave it on. Reduce loud sounds. No, I didn't think I'd bother with that. A few other things there that I won't bother changing, I don't think. Then you've got your networks, which will be for your Wi-Fi, no doubt. A system. There we go, software updates. Let's just have a look at this. Um, yeah, there is an update available. I won't do that now. I'll do that later on. But that is the version that mine has uh, come with out of the box. So let's go back to the main menu again now. And let's have a look at the TV store. And there you have the library where you'll be able to buy films directly and you've got mine listed up above there it shows you what you've purchased it got a good selection that is one thing with apple um which is another reason why i went for it is that the rivals such as google and um amazon have nowhere near the the range that Apple do for when it comes to HDR content. Um, I know I was quite fortunate that I purchased quite a few films before I even bought this box, and they automatically up, upgraded the films that were in just standard definition and high definition to 4K, which you know I think that's well, pretty good because you know Apple don't normally do anything for free, but you know they felt generous enough to do that. And, you know, that, I think that was one of the big deciding factors for me, especially having an OLED TV. Um, you know, it made sense that to go for a box that, I, you know, I can get the content that I'm watching that will make uh, good use of, of the features of this, of this TV, you know, the HDR and the 4K. So let's go back out. I don't think there's much else to look at on here, to be honest. It's just your sort of regular apps and that on there. Um, so yeah, and there we have it. That's the 4K Apple TV box. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, unboxing video, and it, you know it's been uh, useful to you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Big thanks to all the uh, people who've joined us from the Hot Deals UK site, because I know quite a few of you have come to this channel um, due to the deals that have been on there for the. The OLED TVs and the recent uh, deal on the Apple films at two ninety nine. So yeah, big thanks to all you guys for joining us, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, join me for the next video. And thanks once again. Bye for now.